graphs. Each one was worth three points. Did you graph the two lines correctly, and did you get the correct solution? When you are graphing, make sure you have arrows. Make sure you plot all of your points. Make sure that your solution is correct. If you forgot a negative, then your solution is not correct. Extend your points all the way through. So the solution for number one was negative three, four. The solution for number two was no solution. So if you did not graph those, I would say practice graphing it now. Remember that you can graph all of these in your calculator to double check. Did I graph this correctly? Did I get the correct inter excuse me, intersection? Do we have questions on those two? No. Uh, question for the first one. So okay. it's 5 over 3, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. The negative 1? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I did have the wrong negative. Okay. Any other questions on those two? So make sure if it's a negative, you're going up and left or down and right. If you go up and right or down and left, you went positive. For three and four, same thing. For the y equals four, if you don't remember your point bucks, it is on the board. So go over there, see which one you need. This is a y equal, so it's horizontal. So you should have points and a line. Then your other one only had two points. And then those intersected at negative 1, 4. For number 4, your two lines intersected at 3, negative 1. What do you mean? Like, how do you mean, like, cut the line across? Toy box means horizontal lines for y equals, so it starts at 4 and you draw a horizontal line. So that was one of those special cases. So it's going to have no equal line. So it's 0. Okay. Other questions on those two? Sid, was that your same question? Yeah. So for the most part, we did well on the graphing, some minor errors, just make sure you're plotting all your points, drawing your arrows, putting your solution because that's the whole point to find where they intersect or don't. For substitution, I'm going to go through it once and then talk through the points. So for this first one, since these were both equal to the same thing, you needed to set them equal to each other. So set them equal to each other, solve for x. How you do that, it doesn't matter as long as you get all of your x's on the same side and all your constants on the same side. Many of you added x. 8x, sorry, and subtracted 1. But when you got 0, some of you stopped and said no solution, but that was incorrect. You needed to keep going, keep solving. 0 can be part of your solution, or can be both answers to the solution. It doesn't matter. After you find your x, go back and put this in one of your equations, doesn't matter which one, to find your y value. So we have y equals, let's say I put it in the first one, negative 6 times 0 plus 1. That would just become 0, 0 plus 1 is just 1. And then you had to write your final answer as an ordered pair, not leave them as x equals y equals. So 0, 1 was our final answer for that one. So this one was worth 4 points. 1, did you substitute correctly? That's setting them equal to each other in this case. 
Did you solve for one of the variables correctly? Did you solve for the other variable correctly? Did you get the correct answer? Do we have any questions on that one? For the most part on this page, we were good with two and three, but one and four gave us difficulty. So with two, we have an equation that is solved already, so we can take that equation and put it in for y. If you do that, don't forget to negative that as L front. Some of you did, and then it changed your entire answer, so be very careful with that. So then you would distribute the negative. Combine your like terms and start solving for x. So when we combine our like terms, we get negative x. We can add 7 to the other side. And then when we divide, make sure you keep your negative. Sometimes, uh, as I was grading, I saw that we were, like, we started off with a negative, but then we dropped the negative, so then our answer became positive, or vice versa. So just be careful with that. Double check your work. After you get your x, take that number, put it back into one of your equations, and find y. So y equals 3 times negative 3 plus 7. y equals negative 9 plus 7. So y equals negative 2. So your final answer would be negative 3, negative 3. What questions do we have on that one? Some of us were um, trying to use this method, which is fine, but you create more work for yourself by having to solve one of the variables for the same. You can do that, just don't create more work for yourself if it's not necessary. So again, that one was worth four points, substituting correctly, solving for one of the variables correctly, solving for the other variables correctly, and then the final answer. For the most part, all of us got three, if we got there. Put this into y, into the other y, I should say. And then start to solve for x, distribute Combine your like terms, so when you do that, negative 4 plus 28 becomes a 24. And then we can get rid of the 28. So when you divide both sides by 24, you get 2. And then once you find x, you have to go back and find y. Some of the issue was you guys found one of the variables, but not the other, so make sure you're finding both. So this would be y equals 7 times 2 minus 7. So then our final answer would be 2, 7. Do we 
have any questions on that one. Or this was the most troublesome problem on the series. Because the very first thing we need to do, since we don't see a variable that's solved already, is solve for a variable. Many of you were trying to solve for x, which gave you a bunch of fractions, but you don't have to solve for, I'm sorry, solve for y. You don't have to solve for y. Find a variable that's by itself, or close to being by itself. Maybe there's a plus in front of it, or a minus in front of it, but it doesn't have other numbers. Get rid of everything else. So solving for one of these variables was worth one point. So this one was worth five instead of four because of this. After you have that equation, you would take it. You would take it and put it back in. So distribute, solve for y. When you combine your like terms, you would get 20y. Get rid of the 30 by adding. And then when we divide, our y becomes 2. Then once we find y, we have to go back and find x. So you can put this value into one of the other equations. And solve for x. should be positive 6, and your final answer is 6 2. What questions do we have on that one? I will say, like the quiz, the test will not give you any decimal or fraction answers. So if you start to get a decimal or fraction answer, go back and look at your work. Something's wrong, so you missed something, you forgot a negative, something. When you're finished with this, move on to the next page. Solving for one of the variables, solving for the other one, and then your final answer. So for number one, you could have started off by eliminating your x's, because these both have a3, doesn't matter, that one's negative. If you want to solve for your y's, then you have to change it. To eliminate the, these, we would add them together. So you would have to show me that you added them, otherwise I wouldn't know how you eliminated them. And then add everything, so negative 7 plus 5 so gives us negative 2, 13 plus a negative 11 is 2, and then divide, so y is negative 1. Some of you got 1 instead of negative 1, so be careful, double check your math. After 
after you have y, go back and solve for x, put it in one of the equations, doesn't matter which one. So if I put it in the second one, we have 3x minus 5 equals negative 11, and then add 5 to both. and divide so that your answer is also negative. So for when it first starts with 3x plus 5, is it, why wouldn't it be uh, 3x plus 7? So you can use this one. Oh, I can choose either Yeah, one. you can choose either one. Just make sure it's negative 3x if you use that first one. Okay. So then our final answer would be negative 2, negative 1. Uh, there are questions on that one. Two is similar. You can eliminate your x's right away. You don't have to do anything to change it, but if you were eliminating your y's, you would have to change it. So we could subtract both of these equations to eliminate our x's. So subtract everything. So negative 4 minus a negative 3 becomes negative y. Double check your math with this because there's a lot of negatives. Negative 20 minus a negative 24 becomes a positive 4. So if you subtracted, some of you didn't get this, or some of you got positive 4 as your final answer. Which threw everything else off. So always double check your math. Then put this back into one of the equations, doesn't matter which one. And solve for x. So we would subtract 16. Be careful because these are both negative. So then our final answer would be negative 6, negative 4. When you say when I put it in for why we like when I put it in here. Yes, that is what we can change. These aren't the same, so you have to make them. So pick a number that they both go into and then multiply them both to get that number. With three and four, you had to change either one or both equations. So with number three, some of you changed this bottom one to multiply by two. Some of you changed the y's, so it doesn't matter though. And unless you're talking to Miss Larson, you shouldn't be talking. So if we multiply the second one by two, now we're just looking at the first one and this last one. Some of you multiply this by negative two, so it was 16 and 16. Doesn't matter. To eliminate these two, we would add. Again, if you're not sure, put them in the calculator. Do 16 plus a negative 16, 16 minus a negative 16, see which one gives you zero. Five plus six would give us 11. 30 plus 36 would give us 66. 
and then solve for y. So that y equals 6. Then go back and find your x by putting that into one of the equations. Doesn't matter which one. So we would be multiplying 18, multiplying to get 18, right? Get rid of 18. 18. And that gives us 0. 18. 18. 18. 18. So x equals 0 and your solution is 0, 6. Well, you could. Oh, she plugged it in a different way. I put mine to the top. You plug this in the top. Yeah. As long as the math is correct. I only put like one possibility on my answer key and then I check everyone else's. Questions on that one? When we added 30 and 36. Um, for number four, there was no way of getting around. You had to change them both, whether you eliminated your x's or eliminated your y's. Many of you went the y route. You could have went the x route. It didn't matter. So multiplying the first one by nine, the second one by five. So change the entire problem. 81x minus 45y equals negative 261. Negative 40x minus 45y equals negative 140. Is there a way to get the x to opposite? Yes, you would have to multiply by 9 and 8. So, so your numbers would be even bigger. Good. I'm saying, like, is it with like find like similar numbers with the x numbers that like, nine and eight yeah. share? You would have to keep multiplying your nines and your eights and see when they intersect. Great. To eliminate our y's, we would subtract eighty-one minus a negative forty would be negative. Sorry, positive one twenty-one x. Negative two sixty one minus negative one forty is negative one twenty one. And then I will finish this x, but we'll finish the rest when we get back to lunch. We got negative one. We need to now go back and solve for y. Put negative one into one of your equations, it does not matter which one. So we have negative nine minus five y equals negative twenty nine. Add nine to both sides. Make sure you are keeping your negative. If you got to this problem, so if you drop one of your negatives, we gave you a negative four instead of a positive four. But the final answer should have been negative one to four. Questions on that one? As I mentioned earlier, the word problems we're not going to actually solve, but I'm going to help you set them up, define your variables, and give you the actual answer. So if you did solve them, you can check yourself. 
Um, the reason being that there are three different ways to solve every word problem, graphing, substitution, elimination, and I don't have time to show you every way to solve it for every problem. Each problem was worth eight points. Two for defining your variables. Two for setting up the correct equations. Two for solving both variables. Two for the correct answers. So if you're not sure where to start, look at the question. That will tell you the two things you don't know. The speed of the current and the speed of the boat. What variables you use does not matter. You do have to be specific though. So current speed, boat speed, river speed, and boat speed, speed of boat, speed of current, or speed of river. Those are all acceptable. If you just put boat and current, I don't know what that means. Those would be worth two points. All of these equations will be set up very similarly, except these first two won't have a lot of numbers. You'd be adding the two variables together for one of them and subtracting for the other. For the boating and for the plane examples. And then again, I'm not going to solve this, but you can solve by elimination, substitution, graphing, does not matter. Your answer should have labels. So here we're dealing with miles per hour. So the boat speed was 11 miles per hour. The current speed was 10 miles per hour. So even if you just know how to set it up and know how to define your variables, you could at least get partial credit. So make sure you do that. If you get stuck on how to solve it, if you've already done the other three, go back and look. The process is the same. Do we have questions about any of this? Yes. How do you get it? You have to solve it, but I'm not doing that. You have to solve this. You have to solve it. <laughs> for number two, same thing. You're looking for the price of an adult ticket and the price of a child ticket. So those will be your two variables. We call it A and C, X and Y, doesn't matter. And then again, be specific. Price of adult ticket, price of child ticket, cost of either or. If you just put adult ticket, child ticket, we don't know what that is talking about, are you talking about amount of, are you talking about cost of, we don't know. If you just put adult and child, then we don't even know what you're referring to. So cost of adult ticket or price of either word. And cost of child ticket. This equation has six numbers, so you're going to use all six. So 11a plus 2c equals 149, and 9a plus 14c equals 295. Pick which way you want to solve, graphing, elimination, substitution. After you solve them, you would get a is 11 dollars, and c is 14. Questions on this one? Okay. For number three, I think some of the wording may have confused you if you got to this one because there are two different high schools and we're talking about vans and buses but just look at the question the question is asking find the number of students in each so that's what we need to focus on so number of students in each van number of students in each bus that's what we're looking for If 
you put number of vans or number of buses, be careful because that's not what it was looking for. It actually told you those, those numbers, so you knew that information. This also has six numbers, so you're going to use all six of those with your variables to set up your equations. So 3B plus 7B equals 187, and 12B plus 1B equals 158. Pick one of your methods of solving, graphing, substitution, elimination, one of them doesn't matter. Question. Mm -hmm. If we're supposed to do it for elimination, do we still have to like, you know, add, like, multiply by, multiply by? Just all the rules stay the same. Yes. So if you're doing by elimination, do you need common coefficients and so on? Oh, okay. Easy. I think this was 11 and 22. I don't remember. It was. When you get an answer, and if it's a van, van, van bus question, um, think about, does your answer make sense? Usually, more people fit on a bus than a van, so if you have more students in your van than bus, something's wrong. Okay. Questions on this one? Uh, local question, what is the, is this still the same for the second one, like, B is, like, B minus C, would it be like the both B and the current speed? Yes, this doesn't change the both speed and the current speed, we're just adding one to the top of the other, but I don't think this would be that. So they do the same thing, both, either way? Add one to the current end, yes. Same thing with plane speed and wind speed. Any other general questions? All right, go ahead and clear off your desk. If you were going with Miss Larson, um, take your stuff with you to include your calculator.